Welcome back to the shop everybody. In this video I'm going to show a tutorial on how I made what we call the fancy box. How I made the panels on the CNC using Carveco software. Now before we begin please remember the September giveaway. Go to that video on my YouTube channel and follow the instructions to win. It's an easy hundred dollars. When I say fancy box this is what I'm talking about. A hammered side wolf carved box. Here's the sides. These are panels that were made with the CNC and I'm going to show you in this video how to do it. Here's the top before I cut it down and here is the top cut down with some polyurethane applied. In order to begin we need to determine a few things. Number one, will the box be square or rectangular? If we choose square then we'll need two separate programs to complete the box. If the box is rectangular, you will need three separate programs. One for the sides, one for the front and back, and one for this pretty looking top. Now the box can be put together with any type of joinery that you choose. However, that joinery should be complete before, I said again, before you begin carving this box. If you're using mitered corners such as these here, the miters should be cut in, everything should be dry fitted, and then you will put the piece in the machine to create the texture on the side of the panel. Let's jump into the programming. So, our box is six inches high, eight inches wide, 12 inches deep. What we need to do is establish a work surface that is smaller by one inch on every dimension. So in our case, the box is, let's do the side first, is eight inches wide. So we will reduce that by one inch on each end, which is two inches, which gives us a dimension of six inches overall in width. The box is six inches tall we want to maintain the one inch border all the way around the panel when it's complete. So we'll reduce the top and the bottom by one inch, again two inches, which gives us four. We'll put the origin in the center. I find on the reliefs it just works better to put your origin in the center of your project. We'll hit OK. And it opens up in the 3D view. Now we'll need the 3D view to do this project. You can see the origin is in the center. I have it turned on just so it makes it easier to see it. All right, now that we have our work surface set up in the work view area, go back over here to your clip art library and click on that. Go to this box, type in the word hammer, and as you'll see, you put in the first letter and it'll pop up. Right here is the texture I used, hammered text. Left click that and drag it into your work area. Release it up to this X and close it out. Now we simply need to resize this to match the size of our work area or our project. Over here on the right hand side you'll scroll down to where it says the sizes or where you're allowed to change the sizes. You're going to want to click on this lock until it disconnects or unlocks the aspect ratio. You don't want the aspect locked in this case. Now we know our width is six inches, that's correct, but our height is not six, our height is four. Hit apply. Now hit F9 on the keyboard, it'll put it right directly in the center. Go back to this side and adjust the Z height. Now you could have done that and after you get more familiar with doing these panels or doing reliefs, you could punch these numbers in right as you go. You wouldn't have to continue going back and forth. And in this case, we want the relief height to be a quarter of an inch. Hit apply. Push down on your space bar click your left button on your mouse and you can turn it and you can see 
we definitely have a relief carving. Now that we have the relief carving and we're satisfied with it, we need to scroll down and paste it to our work surface. And then another little trick we can do, you know you get this thing out of position like this, come right up here to this box and click on this box and it pops it back to the correct orientation. The next thing we need to do is create tool paths. In order to create those tool paths, you can click on the word tool paths over here. It will open up all of your tool options, your tool path options. You would choose this one here, or simply click on this icon and it will open the relief tool path that you're looking for. We're going to do a whole relief. You're going to come down and click a finishing tool, and in this case we'll use a quarter inch ball nose. Select that. You're going to want to click on it one more time to open it back up. Click in this box to reduce the step over to 0.02. No other adjustments are made here. I didn't make any. Continue to scroll down. Select a roughing tool. And in this case, I used the same tool for a roughing tool. That way I didn't have to change in the middle of the carve. We'll continue down. Safe Z is correct. We need to click to define the material. Now our box size is our wall thickness or board thickness, stock thickness if you will, was three quarters of an inch. So we need to change that to 0.75. We'll click OK. We'll need to create a name. We'll call this box side and calculate. Depending on the speed of your computer, that will determine how fast this takes place. Once this is complete, as always, we will simulate a toolpath to make sure there isn't anything that I may have missed. And we are patient watching the little red line go up across the screen. When that completes here and completes here, it has created the toolpath. And there we are, the toolpath is complete. Now we can close this out, click on toolpaths again, scroll down to simulate right here, simulate all toolpaths. And there you have it, there's a panel. Now it doesn't look the same as the box in the beginning of the video because it's not showing you the one inch border that will exist based on the size of the stock that you have loaded in the machine. Again, origin in the center, so it will only carve a 4x6 panel that is actually 6x8. So we're going to want to save these tool paths. box side that's correct and I can't stress this enough change the name or you'll lose the previous program box side hit save I hit it again out of habit and there we have the box side now if you're doing a square box you'll need to produce four pieces using that programming and now we'll move on to the lid. So we'll close this out. We can come over here and go to File, go to New Model, File, New Model. Now we need to know the dimensions of the box, and our box is 12 by 8. So the width will need to be, in this case, 12. It needs to be exactly the same by 8. Again, origin in the center and click OK. Do I want to save the changes? Certainly I do. And we'll give that a name. Fancy 
box side and it starts again in the 3D work surface area okay so before we continue and we proceed with the lid I want you to be clear that if you're going to make a box that is not square you will use the same programming techniques and you will just adjust for the longer length of the side of the box or the front of the box depending on which direction you're making longer than the other but you will use the same type of programming you'll reduce the size of the piece the work surface area by one inch all right let's move on to the lid So we have a work surface that is 8 by 12, which is the size of the box that we have created. We'll go back over here to the Relief Carving Clip Art Library. That's a mouthful. And we'll start typing in the word wolf. And as you can see, after a few letters, the piece I chose is right here. close this out we no longer need it you can see it's just a little bit bigger than it needs to be so we'll come over here and we'll resize it now in this instance you're going to want to make sure the aspect ratio lock is on it's locked between height and width right here otherwise it'll distort this picture and it just won't look correct now we know the box is 12 wide 8 tall so we need to adjust this To 12 wide 8 tall unfortunately it gives us 8.48441 that's just a touch bigger than what we're allowing or what we need for a work surface unlock the ratio and remove that excess half of an inch hit apply hit F9 to put it in the center and yes it distorted it just a little bit but not enough that you're going to be able to see the difference a half an inch divided by two is a quarter of an inch worth of distortion across the picture you won't see it now for a Z height we started with three quarter inch material we're going to carve this out to one half an inch. So when this finishes carving, this shoulder of the wolf will be at the surface of the material. This area will be removed down to one half of an inch. Hit apply. Double check the measurements, 12 by 8 by 1 half, that's correct. When we're happy, whoops, let's zoom that back in. When we're happy, we paste it down. And there you have the lid. Same thing as before, we'll use this icon for the tool paths. Let's put that back in the middle. We'll use this icon for the tool paths. We'll use a whole relief. Click to select a finish, quarter inch ball nose, select, click it again, reduce the step over, and the reason for reducing the step over is to generate a smoother surface and reduce the amount of sanding that I have to do on these irregular shapes. Go down to roughing tool. In this case we will use a different tool we will use a quarter inch end mill, flat end mill. Select that tool. Now we need to scroll back up. We probably could have done this in the beginning, but we need to scroll back up and change the tool number on the finishing tool to tool number two. Click off of it. That removes this little X that sits here. Scroll back down. The roughing tool is in none of these other things need to be clicked let's double check one other thing 
the movement is a raster type movement that is correct we want the tool running back and forth we don't want circular movement on both tools both are correct we scroll down the Z height is one half an inch above the highest point we don't need it that high let's open this up let's adjust it right here in the safe Z I typically use one quarter of an inch and that is excessive really we don't need it to be that high but I put it there just for safe business we'll go down to click the material again it's three quarters of an inch hit OK give it a name we'll call it box lid calculate the tool path and again we wait for my computer's speed demon like speed here to run the red line up the carving once it's complete we will simulate the tool path I always simulate them because you never know when you're going to forget something close this out click on tool paths scroll down to simulation simulate all tool paths and there we have a nice lid carving now originally when I did this project I oversized the cut on everything and then I used the bandsaw to cut it to the proper width and sanded it into the correct size now you're more than welcome to do that if you start out this way where you've made the actual carving the correct size then you don't have to do too much bandsaw work now if you decided that you wanted to have this thing come out exactly right you would set up a border box around the outside set up another tool path which would be a contour tool path and have it cut this thing off when it comes to the lid I prefer to oversize the stock do the carving then cut it off with the bandsaw so that I can sand in the edges and get the seam between the lid and the box as precise as possible we've simulated it it's correct let's save the tool pass one more time we want to make sure that tool number one is being used first tool number two is being used second we want to change the name again I keep saying that change the name save the tool path hit it one more time close this out and there you have the box lid and then of course you have to use all other woodworking techniques to put this together but I hope you got something out of this video I hope you enjoyed it I hope you learned something from this video give me a like a share and a comment Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.